recording. We started. Well, thank you all for coming here. I am so glad you guys came. Um, thank you for to the church for this beautiful, beautiful classroom that's nice and warm. Let's give them a round of applause. And thank you to your families and for your babysitters, the people who give you rides here. Thank you to them. Let's give them a round of applause. And thank you for yourselves for uh, investing time in you and yourself to give yourself the information and investing time in me to hear me present to you guys. So give yourselves a round of applause. My name is Spencer Mangles, and welcome to Living a Balanced Life, Balancing Emotions. Now, how many of you have ever heard the phrase, um, when, when your mom's getting upset, I've heard the phrase like, uh, you know, oh, I, I can't think anymore, you know, where mom's never said that? Okay, Eric, you don't count. Anyone else? Raise your hands. Yeah. My mom's definitely said that. Okay. Um, how many of you have ever gotten to the point where you just feel like if you take one more thing, you you know have one more thing happen to you, you're just going to explode? Has anybody had that happen to you? I yeah. definitely have. Hey. Well, today I'm going to present to you how to balance your emotions and how to clear them so you don't feel those things getting up and so you can unlock your mind and be able to think. It has been my experience that when the adversary gets to us, he first starts at our emotions. That's where he hits us the first, is he gets us emotionally charged um, with getting angry at people or um, getting frustrated and impatient whatever it is, or even, you know, for men don't usually have this problem, but for you women out there, um, it makes you just depressed, sad. I guess men have it too. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been depressed and sad. I take that back. So he targets your emotions first. And what I'm going to present today is how to be able to, first of all, clear those emotions when you feel them building up, and so you have an outlet. And second of all, how to block that and how to protect your emotions so you're not so emotionally fragile, I'll say. Uh, how many of you would be interested in learning how to do that? Yes, me. Excellent. <laughs> all right, so in this class, I'm going to... Um, give you guys the opportunity to interact and to participate. This is not supposed to be a lecture where I'm just sitting here telling you guys what's what. You know, I had a couple of you guys that were students. This isn't like that. You can talk here. I mean, actually, you did talk anyway. You're on TV. Smile. <laughs> Um, in this class, I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. I'm asking, I'm going to ask you to kind of stretch, but it's going to be safe. It's just a little bit, okay? So just be prepared to stretch a little bit. And most importantly is in this class, we're going to have fun. Who wants to have fun? Yeah. Good, good. Glad to hear it because we're going to have lots of fun here. All right, I'm going to show, share with you a few of the things that I've learned that cause us to reach those emotional boiling points, um, or rather, what what makes it so you can't release those emotions. Um, you know, a lot of us are when we go to work. You know, we can't just unload at work, right? That's that's not acceptable. We'd probably get fired if we just felt these emotions all of a sudden just... So, there's work. There's um, trying to impress people. When you're trying to be like, oh no, no, I can't, I can't have these emotional come parts now. Um, and there's also work. 
Oh, and there's also when you're having people depend on you and you have to be the strong one, you have to be the dependable one. So, the times, the times that you get to do that are, are very limited throughout the day where you don't feel, I mean, actually most of us don't even get the opportunity to date. You know, when we get done with work, we go home and there's our family members. Some of us have uh, kids that depend on us and they're all, you know, oh, mom, dad, you know, we need this, we need this. And you can't, you can't take time to go and to take care of your own emotions. So I'm going to share with you today a few techniques that I have learned that you can take and do um, you know, when you're on a car ride or going for a walk, just really quick times where you can help balance your emotions and prepare yourself and guard your emotions um, from negative forces. Um, when you say uh, the techniques that you've learned, are, um, is this just from life experience or is something that kind of showed you? This is actually from, yes, this is from life experiences, um, seminars that I've been to, classes I've taken, um, and uh, talking to other people and learning from their life experiences. So this is actually something that I've been interested in for quite a long time, let's see, that would be seven years now that I've been using these techniques and developing these techniques and uh, having, and learning new techniques. It, you know, not all of them are seven years old, but it's been over a long course of study, um, a lot of struggles that I went through, and hopefully now that I'm teaching you guys, that you'll be able to avoid going through. Probably, you probably started when you got all the stress from my, from my class. <laughs> <laughs> that might have started the stress. All right. So, before I get into that, may I share with you some of the background that has taught me these things and that I've learned from? Is that okay with you guys? Yes, yeah, sure. sure. Great. So, um, as a young man, I spent many of my summers as a camp counselor for youth and children with diabetes. And I had to help them uh, manage their blood sugars, um, Help, help them with their diet plans, and uh, basically I, I was their standing mother for about a week. And I had the opportunity to help these kids, these young, some of them were actually children, some of them were young adults, where I was able to help them actually work through their problems. And, you know, this disease has a lot of uh, victimization feelings to it. A lot of people just feel like, oh, why me? You know, why me? You know, it's not fair. It was just my genes. I was born this way, you know. And I was able to help a lot of them get through those and show them the good things that they could do and show them what goals they could do. I showed them a lot of heroes that I know that have diabetes and what they've accomplished, Olympic athletes, um, musicians. I was also had the opportunity to serve on a work mission where I was a, a um, tribe leader and then later on I was actually a camp commander underneath the, only underneath the person who was actually running it. And I would help all the kids, um, there was a lot of a lot of opposition that they were facing. A lot of them were getting really homesick, and I was able to help them by getting them involved in the activities we were doing. I was able to mentor a lot of them and still have close friendships with a lot of the uh, fellow missionaries that I had there. Yeah, I remember that you helped me out with my homesickness and um, I wasn't used to working uh, out in the sun like that, and you made it more fun by teaching us some songs and stuff, and then uh, just helping us have a good work, at, work ethic. So that was, I that was a lot of fun. I kind of wish they would do another one, but I don't know that I would have time to 
donate to her like I did that time. Um, I was also, um, two of you were my students, I was also a teacher for a private school for a little, a little under six months. I was able to be presenter and teacher to sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And that was a lot of fun and had a lot of learning experiences from that. All right, so in this class, we are going to have a few guidelines that I would like us all to follow. Is you know, rules are something that everyone lives by and just helps establish this sense of security and order. So rule number one is respect. Okay, I'm going to respect all you guys here. You know, there's no dumb questions. There's no dumb answers. Okay, I'm going to be have high levels of respect for you guys here. And I'm going to ask that you guys respect each other. You know, we all have different life experiences. We all have been through different things. So, respect. Thing number two is I commit to you guys here that I am going to give 100% as your presenter and as your teacher today. I'm going to give it all. I'm not going to hold back. Even though, you know, I might feel like I'm a little shy and I don't want to share that much. I'm going to give 100%. If I feel like it's going to benefit you guys, I'm going to play it all out. And I ask that you guys play it all out too. If I ask you to do something, to interact, you know, just play it all out. All out. You know, if like I said in the beginning, I'm only going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, thing number three is, I'm going to call it MCD. Manage your communication devices. So, we all have cell phones. They're all in our pockets right now. Take it out and just put it on vibrate. If you need to have a call, if somebody's calling you, that's fine. You can take it outside and deal with that. I understand life happens. Um, but just manage your communication devices. Also, one other thing we can communicate with is our mouths. So, I encourage you to participate. You know, if you find something funny, it's great, you know, to laugh. If you have an aha moment, raise your hand and share it. And if you see something and you can point it out to your neighbor, that's okay. I encourage that. But let's keep it to a minimum, you know, if you feel yourself starting to slip away and you know bring it back in and just manage those communication devices. Also, carrier pigeons. Smoke signals, none of those. <laughs> Alright, can we all agree to obey those three rules? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Awesome. You guys are great. So, as I started talking about at the beginning, is the adversary is really after us. He's gunning for us. I have seen it so much in our lives. I think we all have. And recently, I've seen how prevalent it is and how much he's really getting into us and getting into our families. Um, if he, if, and even if we have managed to get him out of our heads and out of our hearts, you know, he just goes to the next level and starts hitting our family, making our family struggle. You know, he knows how to do it. So, where he targets us first is going to be our emotions. He wants us to get us upset, get us to where we feel those emotions coming up, and then we just don't think, turn our mind off. And Beautiful artistic skills. Mm -hmm. 
So there are five aspects that I have observed where we are getting hit. Our emotions are one. Let's just go. Emotions in our mind. Okay, then our body, our soul or spirit, and then our relationships or connections. Because once he gets our emotions, then we can't think. Remember that whole, you know, when your mom said when you were little, oh, I can't think straight. Or if you've said that before, okay, that's because our emotions are, are getting built up. Okay? And then when he gets our mind, if he gets our mind, then we can't make those plans. We can't follow through. And so that affects our body or our physical aspects. When our physical isn't going and doing what it's supposed to do, isn't showing up at church, isn't showing up at our um, meetings, isn't going and helping people, you know, when you're not doing what you're supposed to do, that's going to affect your spirit. And when your spirit's affected, then you lose your relationships. And that's your family, that's your relationship with God, that's even your relationship with business and finances. They'll just come apart. So... That is my, in a nutshell, my approach to five steps of wellness. And you guys are here tonight, and we are going to be discussing emotions. How to balance them, how to clear them, and how to protect them. So, I'm just going to jump right into the first principle that I have learned, and it is a huge, awesome principle that helped me so much is young. It really and truly is one of the best things. Um, but the important thing is, is that we're not yelling at people. If we go out and we can release to nature is the best. Nature is just full of energy, full of healing power. I don't... I don't know anybody that doesn't love nature in some form or the other. You know, they might not love the desert, but they love the winter. They may not love the winter, but they love green and plants. You know, I, I don't know anybody that doesn't have some connection to nature in some form or, or another. So, what I do is, when I feel those emotions coming up, is I go for a run. That is a great way. I'm out in nature. I'm breathing deep. You know, I feel and see everything. And then I just have a conversation. I don't have to go to the yelling because I have gotten to the point where I am balanced enough in my emotions that they're not up to here. But if you know yourself, and it's kind of something that you have to be self-evaluate. If you're up to here, you might have to go to the yelling. You might even have to go to the physical side. And I had somebody that presented something to me actually only a few days ago that was like a just, oh, that is such a great idea, because he does the same thing. What he'll do is he'll pick up a rock, and he'll, he'll go out. It's very important that you don't do this around people. This is a, this is a disconnect time where you, where you separate. Because you don't want to unload all your energy on somebody. Now, that's very detrimental because not only does that not get rid of all your stuff effectively, but it gives them it too. Because people, they bounce back your energy. We interact with people. It's not just a one-sided thing like nature can be or is. So, he'll pick up a rock and in his seclusion, He'll talk to the rock, or yell at it, and then throw the rock. And if he needs to do it again, he'll pick up another rock. Talk to the rock. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, he talks to rocks. Guys, this works. I promise, this works. When you're up to here, and you just eat, one thing will set you off, and you just, you don't know what else to do, 
this thing works so well. So I would suggest to you, if you feel yourself starting to build up, I don't let it get to here. This is a dangerous area. This is, you're going to blow up when your kid knocks over a pitcher of water area. This is your sibling comes into your room and won't leave you alone area that you blow up at them. So this is a dangerous area. We're going to want to keep it down here. Okay? It would be better if it's down here. But we're going for it just here. Okay? So when you feel it starting to build up, you just go out, take the time out, and you know if you don't have that option, just go for a drive. Drive is a great way to do it. Go to drive and unload on your steering wheel. Just, you know, just tell it why you're mad at it. No road rage, though. No road rage. No road rage. Okay. This, is, this is why we're clearing our emotions, so we don't have road rage. And actually, this brings up a really good point with releasing and disconnecting from people. Okay. There's a very, very common tendency for people to unload on other people. And it's commonly called venting. Okay? That is very harmful. It doesn't help them. You may feel a little bit better, but what you're doing is you're... Uh, I don't know if I can draw a cup good enough. Okay, there's your cup. Yeah, okay. near that hole. Okay, you are dumping your cup into somebody else's. And they really do take on your energy. You know, how many of us have had friends that have vented to us before? If you guys, hey, how do you feel after that happens? Does anyone want to share? Annoyed or frustrated. Yeah, I know. Um, I feel kind of agitated. You almost feel like it's like it's like something's like almost latched onto you. You feel like you can't get free of it. Yeah. Even when like, you're in a good mood, somebody's got a bad attitude, it always spreads over to you. you it know? so does. You know, it's hard to be happy and have a good environment if the people around you are, are you know, having that negative emotion and pushing against, you know, your happy emotions, so. Exactly, exactly. And this is actually tying into my next segment, which is how to protect yourself. So, remind me if I get off track to come back to this. So, do not dump your cup, okay? Okay, dump it out in nature, if that's okay, right? You know? No one's going to get mad at you if you take a glass of water and go and dump it out in nature. I've never heard of anybody getting mad about that. So that's totally okay. But don't do it to other people. Okay? Can I ask you guys to commit that you will stop dumping on other people? Or give it your best effort if you don't feel like you can commit. Just remember, when it's happening, and, it, and sometimes it will happen. You know, sometimes it'll just happen and then you'll realize. The important thing is to forgive yourself and do better. Okay. We're not perfect. I don't think our goal in this life is to achieve perfection, to achieve progress. So, if it does happen, you forgive yourself and you move on. Do better next time. I have a quick question. It yes. may sound kind of weird, but, um, you know, you're talking about don't vent and, you know, dump on other people. Um, and I don't know if this kind of ties into this whether or whether or not this ties into it or not, but um, what, then what would your opinion be on like a therapist or something? Because aren't you like going over and like dumping everything onto them? Or... That, that's an excellent question. Okay, so I'm not a therapist. I have not been to school um, to be a psychiatrist. I'm not qualified to say what they do, but I would imagine that a good psychiatrist and. Since you brought it up, this was actually part of the stuff I was going to bring up later, but let's just go there now. A good psychiatrist puts on, you could call it a biohazard suit, you could call it an umbrella, you could call it an impenetrable force field, but they, a good one will do that. And if you have somebody in your life that is 
constantly venting to you and is not really a, it's either not a relationship or you see that it would do more harm if you told them, hey, stop dumping on me. That is a good tool to use where you just mentally prepare yourself when you, when you go back to enter this conversation, you just say, okay, biohazard suit on, what they say it's going to splash on the biohazard suit and go right off. Yes, Sean, please stand up. Stand up. I just wanted to say that um, there, to me, it seems like there is a difference though um, between you know discussing your issues or what problems you have with someone and venting. Because um, like I think it is important to discuss, but it's you don't want to vent. Absolutely. Thank you. Great, great so comments. Doing that in the morning, early morning, and like expressing. I I would suggest to you that. Before you have those conversations, and sometimes you'll just have them, and it's not a planned thing. I would suggest to you that before you have those conversations, you use some of these clearing tools. You go talk to a tree, or throw a stone, or um, another really good one if you are in an environment where you can't really be loud and have these conversations, is writing it down and burning it. Write it down. That one is a fun one. Actually, I think Joseph has, can, is it okay if I share about you? Yeah, my brother Joseph loves that one. He, he's kind of a pirate. And, yeah, he loves to watch the negative burn. Um, that, that is a great one to use. If you. Come on in. So, it's okay. Enough people have broadcast it. That's okay. Thank you for coming. Welcome. You used that one before? Yeah, a few times. And the reason it makes me feel good is like it feels like I'm winning a fight, like taking down the enemy, just watching them burn like it. Yep. It, it's very satisfying. It is. It is very satisfying. Um, so, welcome. Uh, just to recap what you missed. We were just discussing some releasing techniques that you can use um, for when your emotions are building up. And we discussed, I call it talking to a tree, because you don't want to talk to people um, and vent on them and download all your emotions onto them, because then they're just absorbing all your emotions and they're having those problems. And then when they go, especially if it's another person involved, you know, when they go talk, to that person, they're gonna feel all that stuff come up. You know, you know, Mr. Mr. Black here did so and so, and then when you go and talk to Mr. Black, you're thinking in your mind the whole time, hey, this guy did so and such and such. So it's very important not to download on other people. And I also just discussed how you can prevent people from downloading on you is you just mentally prepare, be like, okay, this person is gonna start downloading on me, or is downloading on me, and you just mentally put up a barrier, you're just like, force field, okay, this stuff that they're gonna say is just gonna come, it's gonna hit the barrier, and it's gonna go off, and I'll be fine, I'm protected. So, just protect yourself. I also call, um, call it a biohazard suit, you just mm -hmm. zip it up, mm -hmm. and then you can wade into the toxic chemicals that they're downloading out, and if you can, if you have a relationship to talk to this person and explain to them what they're doing, that is preferable. Because you are disconnecting when they're venting on you. It's, it's a little bit of a disconnect. It's not a huge disconnect. You're not going to, you know, divorce your spouse because of it. But it is a little bit of a disconnect because you can't have those connections when somebody's trying to download those emotions. And Sean brought up that they're is a difference between downloading on someone and discussing a problem. Absolutely. And you have to be self-aware of what you're doing and what they're doing. And you kind of have to be a little bit in tune with the spirit to decide if they're discussing problems with you or if they're just downloading. And the biggest tell 
if they're downloading on you is if they're not coming up with a solution. If they're not saying, hey, how can we stop this? If they're just spewing, then they're just downloading on you and getting their emotions off on you. And it's not that they're bad people. I think we've all done it before. I've done it before. Um, and like I explained here, it's just their cup's full, your cup's not as full. So they're trying to unload their cup so it's not as full. Lost my train of thought. You explained it in different ways. Talk to a tree. That's right. So, ways that you can uh, get rid of your emotions without talking to people are talking to a tree or nature, just nature in general, just going out, having a conversation. Some people are so unbalanced with their emotions, they're so up to here, that they actually have to yell and scream and get angry at nature. And once you do that, you do that, apologize. That may sound weird, but you just say, I'm sorry for feeling this way, please forgive me, I still love you. Because generally it's based around a person. Our emotions are generally based around people, or or groups of people, or maybe businesses. So it's important that you clear that up and apologize and receive forgiveness for feeling that way. It makes you feel a lot better because I know a lot of people that have used this technique feel really guilty after they're done because they're like, oh, I can't believe I said all those things. So the important thing is to 